Hello everyone, the title of today's video is Mathematical Fallacies, Flaws and Howlers. A howler in mathematics is not really easy to describe but it's a term which is used to denote an error which leads to the correct result innocently through some mathematical uh, steps which are really weird you land into the correct result. So that is something what is known as a howler in mathematics. For example, if you look at 16 by 64, you cancel the 6 above and below, you surprisingly get the correct answer which is 1 by 4. But cancelling 6 above and below is mathematically stupid, right? So these kind of, uh, you know, techniques, these kind of steps, processes that one follows to land into the correct answer is known as a howler in mathematics. By contrast, a fallacy leads by guile to a wrong but plausible conclusion. What do we mean by that is that you do something without realizing you do some mathematically incorrect step in between your steps and you land into something really weird. That is what is known as a fallacy in mathematics. So these are arguments that look correct but are actually absurd and they can be used to illustrate some important mathematical points. So we begin with the most common fallacy which is called the division by zero fallacy. So let's begin by taking x to be 1. Let's multiply both the sides by x. We get x square equal to x. Now let's subtract. The equation can be written as x square minus x equal to 0. Now let's factorize. We can rewrite this equation as x into x minus 1 equal to 0. Now let's divide by x minus 1 to get the answer x equal to 0. This leads to the conclusion that 1 is equal to 0. Where is the error? Because we began with x equal to 1. And we finally landed into x equal to 0. Where does the error occur? We started with x equal to 1. That means x minus 1 is equal to 0. And somewhere along the lines, we are dividing by x minus 1. But x is equal to 1. So that means you are dividing by 0. And we know that division by 0 is not allowed. That's the reason whenever you see the words now divide by, please make sure that you check for this possible fallacy. Division by 0 leads to such fallacies and it's the most common fallacy in mathematics. Now let's look at this one. Let's see if you are able to spot the fallacy or not. Let's begin by taking two numbers a and b, the sum being 12. Now multiply both the sides by a minus b. Now you know uh, a minus b, a plus b is a famous formula. It's a square minus b square and on the right hand side you have 12a minus 12b. Right? Now let's add 36 to both the sides. Let's take a square with the minus 12a, add 36 to it. Take b square with the minus 12b and add 36 to it. What do you get? You get a minus 6 whole square is b minus 6 whole square. Which means a minus 6 is equal to b minus 6. So a is equal to b. Now since a plus b is 12 and a is equal to b, it follows that a equal to b equal to 6. Is it correct? Yes, it's one of the possibilities, but that's not the complete solution. Where did we go wrong? We are not getting the solution because there are other numbers also. There are other real numbers whose sum can be equal to 12. For example, you can have a 4 plus 8. That's also equal to 12. 9 plus 3 is also equal to 12. But why is the answer restricted to a equal to b equal to 6 here? Why are we not getting the other options? Where did we go wrong? A plus b was 12 a minus 6 whole square turned out to be b minus 6 whole square but when we took the square root on both the sides to conclude that a minus 6 is equal to b minus 6 this is where we went wrong because the square root of x square is not x it's mod of x so a minus 6 whole square equal to b minus 6 whole square is not the same as saying a minus 6 equal to b minus 6 it should be a minus 6 mod should be the same as the mod of b minus 6 and that's known as the square root fallacy. So whenever you take the square root on both the sides, please make sure that you instead of writing the plain expression, you have to write the mod of the expression whose square has been considered. So that's the second fallacy which leads to a very very interesting and important mathematical fact that the square root of a number is not the same as the number, it's the mod of the number. So be very very careful now. Another fallacious proof is presented here. 
we start by saying minus 1 by 1 is 1 upon minus 1 which is correct because minus 1 can be written as minus 1 upon 1 or minus 1 can be written as 1 upon minus 1 so these two are equal minus 1 upon 1 is the same as 1 upon minus 1 let's take square root on both the sides when we take square root on both the sides we get under root of minus 1 upon 1 is the same as under root of 1 upon minus 1 let's simplify it turns out that under root of minus 1 upon under root of 1 is the same as under root of 1 upon under root of minus 1. But everybody knows that under root of minus 1 is imaginary. That's what is known as iota. So you get iota upon 1 is 1 upon iota. Which leads to iota being equal to minus iota. There is the error. That's, that's mathematically absurd. Iota is not the same as minus iota. So where did we go wrong in these steps? This fallacy is a good illustration of the dangers when we take a rule from one context and just assume that it will hold in another one also. Remember, when we first learned about square roots, we had never encountered complex numbers. When we were told what under root means in primary classes, 6, 7, 8, 9, whenever it is introduced to the school students, we were never um, told what complex numbers are. So the only objects that we were dealing with were square roots of positive numbers and in that case under root of a by b happens to be equal to under root a upon under root b because for positive a and b it's always true but here when we are applying the same thing to under root of minus 1 upon 1 and 1 upon minus 1 this minus 1 is negative so taking that rule to this setting is leading to a weird result because that rule is valid only for positive numbers a and b so that is a mathematical truth but in the original context only. What is the original context? When a and b are positive real numbers then under root of a by b is the same as under root a upon under root b. If one of them happens to be negative then the rule fails to hold which is taught to us by this fallacy which is called again the square root fallacy another version of the square root fallacy. Let's look at some calculus fallacies here. Calculus fallacies are not really as common as algebraic ones, but here is a good one presented. We know 3 square is 3 plus 3 plus 3. Yeah, 3 square is 9, which can be represented as 3 plus 3 plus 3. Now 4 square is 4 plus 4 plus 4. 5 square is 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 added 5 times. So in general I can write x square to be x plus x plus x plus x where the sum has x terms. Now let's differentiate both the sides though everybody knows differentiation. So differentiating both the sides what do we get? The left hand derivative is 2x because x square derivative of x square is 2x and the derivative of each of these x's is 1. Since the right hand side is the sum of x ones. So we get 2x equal to 2x. So that means 2 is equal to 1. But where is the error? How can we get 2 equal to 1? What was incorrect in these steps? Whatever was incorrect in these steps is going to teach you a very very important mathematical lesson. x square is a sum of x's only when x is an integer. Imagine that x is a non-integer. You cannot say that x square will be the sum of x's when x is an integer for non-integers this obviously fails to hold being discrete is different from being continuous we'll have to be very very careful while generalizing it to the continuous format and then differentiating let's see something went wrong with the integration here now let j be the integral of 1 upon x how do we integrate 1 by x we do it by parts we take 1 by x to be 1 into 1 by x and taking the first function to be 1 by x and the second function to be 1 applying the method of integration by parts it's very easy to verify that the integral turns out to be the same as 1 plus the integral itself which leads to 0 being equal to 1 where did we go wrong here we went wrong here because we neglected the constant of integration this this teaches us that writing the constant of integration in indefinite integrations is not something that you can do away with. These fallacies are known as the constant of integration fallacies and the earliest occurrence of this fallacy is believed to be in uh, J.L. Walsh 1927 publication in American Mathematical Monthly. Here is another interesting fallacy in which we prove that all people in India have the same age. 
now we use the uh, principle of mathematical induction to prove that let's see how we do that suppose sn is the statement which says that in any group of n people everyone in that group has the same age right if we can show that sn is true for every choice of n then we are done right that is how principle of mathematical induction works now suppose there is any group that consists of just one person because we begin like that right we we say that uh, we will we'll have to show that s1 is true then we'll assume it for n equal to k and then we'll prove it for n equal to k plus 1 meaning thereby that it's going to be true for every natural number so let's see what happens for n equal to 1 if there is a group consisting just of a single person then this statement that in any group of n people everyone in that group has the same age is trivially true because the group is not having any other person at all so if there is only one person s1 is trivially true the next stage in the induction argument is to assume sn to be true for say n equal to k and then prove it for the next number k plus 1 so let's assume that sk is true if we assume that sk is true that means in every group of k people everyone has the same age now we have to deduce from it that every group of k plus 1 people is following the same thing that means in any group of k plus 1 people everyone has the same age so let's consider g to be an arbitrary group of k plus 1 people we just need to show that every member of this g, g this group g has the same age let's pick up two members of g let's say p and q are two members of g consider everybody in g except p what will be formed it will be a group of k people let's call it as g star by induction hypothesis in g star everyone will have the same age similarly consider g double star to be the group which is having everybody in g except q now g double star is also a group of k people so by induction hypothesis everyone in this group also has the same age now let's take r to be someone in g other than p and q now look at q and r now q and r are going to belong to g star so they are of the same age similarly p and r belong to g double star so they are also of the same age that means p and q are of the same age now we have seen that considering any two people in g they have the same age it follows that everyone in g has the same age and hence the proof is complete by mathematical induction so we have proved something really really weird through the uh, principle of mathematical induction that everybody in India has the same age which obviously is absurd so where did we really go wrong in this proof the error happened at the very first step there might not be anyone else in G other than P and Q the argument that we applied for uh, you know proving that every group of uh, K plus 1 people has the same age there we took a person r right and then we compared r with p r with q now that might not be existing at all when g is a group of k plus 1 people as long as k is more than 1 that means k plus 1 is more than 2 and in this case there does not exist a third person r in g so rest of the proof will work we are only proving through mathematical induction that if sk is true it implies sk plus 1 as long as k is more than 1 in other words you are proving that if s2 is true that means any two people have the same age so is s3 if s3 is true so is s4 and so on but nowhere have we shown that s2 is true right the basis step of the induction showed that s1 was true but our induction step does not show that s1 implies s2 so that chain gets broken at the first step itself so that's where induction flops because we did not prove that s1 implies s2 right we implied sk implies sk plus 1 for any size which is more than 1 but we did not apply uh, this induction to k equal to 1 we did not say that s1 implies s2 so the chain gets broken there itself and that's why it's leading to something really really weird it is only showing that if all pairs of people have the same age then so does every group of three people and so does every group of four people and so on but that's not something startling it's fairly obvious if you think about it the problem is that it is not true that all pairs of people have the same age and it is true that in any group consisting of just one person everyone has the same age however your proof breaks down when you try to use that fact to prove that every pair has the same age if pq is a pair of people and there's no third person r in the pair to make this step of the argument work 
so the conclusion obviously will not follow and the rest of the proof obviously becomes fallacious so one has to be very very careful while understanding any mathematical concept so here is another interesting fallacy in finite series fallacies see when we take the rules of finite sums to infinite sums that leads to numerous mathematical fallacies and that's the uh, understanding which has given birth to the notion of convergence of infinite series and the rules governing infinite sums so let's look at some fallacies which come under this category to uh, really come to the conclusion of what these fallacies uh, teach us look at this infinite series which is an alternating series 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 so it's alternative uh, alternate plus minus sign 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 now when we group in pairs you can see 1 minus 1 when we group them together you get a 1 minus 1 that's a 0 again 0 again 0 0 added to 0 infinite number of times so that's a 0 now if you group them alternatively in pairs leaving 1 then instead of getting the sum to be 0 this 1 minus 0 minus 0 minus 0 happens to be 1 now this 0 is also the sum which is denoting s and 1 is also turning out of the sum of the series s so that means 1 equal to 0 which is weird let's look at another one let me take s to be 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 obviously s is positive because the sum of positive numbers let's multiply both the sides by 2 this side becomes 2s and this becomes 2 plus 4 plus uh, 8 plus 16 so effectively if you compare it uh, with this it's just s minus 1 because rest of the part is matching when you're multiplying by 2 so that leads to 2s being equal to s minus 1 that means s is minus 1 how is that possible because s stands for a sum which is sum of positive terms only how can sum of positive terms turn out to be negative where did we go wrong we went wrong because we thought that this infinite series are also going to obey the ordinary laws of mathematics which are true for finite sums see the series that we considered above they are both of them are divergent they do not behave uh, the way finite sums do the associative law the grouping cannot be applied freely to an infinite sum unless you are sure that the sum is absolutely convergent also you cannot just blindly take all the laws of arithmetic to infinite sums those law laws are valid only for finite sums so one has to be really careful so these were some sample fallacies which i have shown in this video to make you understand that fallacies and fallacious proofs can be termed as fortunate mistakes in mathematics which have led to a deeper understanding of the uh, notions and it has taught us many valuable lessons and these arguments are a source of learning experience that brings out the inherent richness and uh, versatility of mathematics through hard experience mathematicians have learned to subject even the most evident assertions to rigorous scrutiny and intuition and facile reasoning can often be misleading so one has to be really really careful while dealing with uh, infinite sums or while dealing with uh, division you cannot straight away divide by anything you have to ensure that it's uh, non zero while taking square roots you have to uh, ensure that the square root is meaningful you are taking uh, the laws of square root under root a by b is equal to under root a under root b uh, upon under root b that's only true when you have a and b to be positive numbers so we really need to uh, you know train our brain like that but obviously uh, errors can slip past the most watchful eye also they are often subtle they are difficult to detect but with practice with the uh, uh, you know uh, regular uh, revision of these concepts one can really have a, a command on these things and avoid making mistakes which should not be done thank you so much thank you for watching